Okay, um, we're talking today about building a global market entry strategy. Uh, we're focusing on Germany, uh, but I'm going to give sort of a general presentation which talks about all markets. I mean, uh, obviously the issues are very particular for each market, but this is going to be a high level. And I found a, uh, an article recently published on Globes which I thought was very interesting and very relevant. Um, talks about 4% of Israeli startups succeed. Uh, from what I checked, I think in the U.S. it's about 10%. That already tells me something's wrong here. Um, and the sentence down there talks about what they assume is the reason or what they suspect is the reason that the failure comes with the market reach. Okay, so this is exactly what we're talking about today is the market reach. The way I see it, there are three stages basically. When you think about glowing, going globally, there are three stages that I think about and that I recommend to companies when I speak with them. Notice the uh, colors of the German flag. Start with a goal, move into a message, and move on to your strategy. And then of course the last step is the implementation and I'll elaborate a little bit on these. So before we go into, before we elaborate, I just want to make a few assumptions. The assumption that I'm going to have to make is that a high-tech company has a product which is market ready. Uh, it addresses either a problem or creates an opportunity. Um, there has to be somebody on the other end that either recognizes it as a problem or that could be convinced that this is an opportunity. So there have to be two sides here. Um, uh, the product has some kind of a competitive advantage and the company needs to have some resources to deploy it. And resources is not just money. It's also the ability to scale production. It's the ability to demo a product. You know, the whole process of, of business development, I've run into this many times. A company starts by saying, it'll take us, what, a month, two months, three months, at the most six months. How much are we going to spend? You know, a few tens of thousands of uh, dollars. It ends up being longer and much more complicated, much more expensive, and companies are not uh, always ready for that. So. What is your goal? It's a pretty simple concept, actually. Uh, and certainly in the beginning, you don't really have enough data when you start. You don't actually have what to start with. You're starting with some assumptions. You're starting with your experience. You're, you're basing uh, your, uh, your thoughts on your experiences. But you have to develop some kind of a goal. You have a product. You have a company. And you're saying, OK, I want to sell. OK, that's obvious. Uh, but when do I want to start selling globally? Now we're going to talk globally. When do I want to start selling? Am I ready to sell now? Do I want to start selling now? Am I prepared? Do I have the resources? Do I have the time as a CEO to manage the process? Where do I want to go? Do I want to go into Germany? Do I want to go into the US? There are a lot of um, uh, elements that affect this kind of decision. So right now, again, I'm just almost making it up. I want to go into Germany. Great. Afterwards, we'll figure out if it's even viable or not. Uh, who do I want to sell to? If I want to go into Germany or into the US or into China, who's my client? Who's the client that I think uh, is the right client? I may, I may uh, realize that there could be somebody else. And then how am I going to actually do the sale process? The next is the message. Again, this is a con it's, it sounds like a simple concept. Uh, it's not very complicated, but it's also not as simple as people often think about it. What I mean is that you have to dig deep into a company's product and company structure in order to figure out what really differentiates it. What are the key differentiators of the product and of the company? And there could be many things. It's not always about the product. I'll give an example later on, but it's not always the product is cheaper or the product is better or the product is stronger. Those are pretty simple terms. Uh, maybe there is no competing solution. Maybe my product is faster or maybe speed is about how I get to the market. Uh, maybe my product is more durable. There's an example here of a great product uh, that I did some work also uh, around it, figuring out that this is a, not only a small product and uh, maybe less expensive than some of the other products, but it's also more durable than a lot of, of similar products. More efficient, less costly, uh, better manufacturing process, uh, management experience. There could be many different aspects of, uh, uh, that differentiate my company, and I need to build that into my message. And then what do I do with that message? Well, first of all, it's for me. It's for my company. It's for my focus and my clarity. Once I have a message and I know who I am and what I offer, which is competitive, then I orient my entire company towards that. It helps with me with my pitch. It could be a sentence. It could be 10 minutes, 10 minutes long, but it's my pitch. It's telling uh, uh, people who I am and what I do. And it could be used for all kind of marketing material like website and brochures, et cetera. All right, so now the strategy. 
So the first question I like to ask, and this is put very uh, moderately, I usually use more um, uh, obscene terms in the first sentence, but who cares? I always I, I add something in, in the middle usually. I'll let you guess what it is, but who cares means great. You have a great product, you have a great company. Who cares? You know, and then you gotta figure it out. It's it's a real it's a it's a real strategic question. Um, because that can mean it's your clients who care, maybe it's not your clients, maybe it's you think these are your clients, but it's actually different companies that should care about it. Uh, regulatory bodies, uh, government, uh, who knows what. How to reach them, how to reach them is, you know, uh, strategic, you can think basically of two options. You can either go direct or you can go indirect. Indirect would be through partners or through distributors. Those are the two main uh, concepts. But then also, physically, how do you do it? Do you call them up? Do you work through your network? Do you send them an email? Do you meet them on uh, social networks, et cetera? How do we interact with them uh, goes into the cultural aspect. We'll talk about it a little bit more afterwards with the panel discussion. And then there are other aspects like logistics. How do I get the product there? Also in the demo stage, okay, in the, in the uh, marketing or the business development uh, stage. And then later on when I make a sale, how do I get the products uh, there? How do I deliver them in a timely and efficient way where they don't get stuck in customs or stopped by FDA, et cetera? Um, well, of course, who are my competition? What are the barriers? Barriers could be regulatory barriers, there could be financial barriers, there could be cultural barriers, uh, there could be national, nationalistic uh, barriers, there could be all kinds of barriers. Um, and then, how do I support my customer? And so this is not only about after I've made the sale. This is also a message that you have to deliver to your customers or your prospective customers, and also to your prospective partners, before you've ever started, before you've ever sold, before you've ever signed the agreement, they want to know how you're going to support them, especially if they're in a different country. And I've, I've had this question come up many, many times. You're in Israel, we're in the US. How are you going to support us once we make the commitment? And then how do we grow? How do we take that and grow it into more business from that company and, of course, from other companies as well? There are other aspects. I won't go into them, but human resources aspects, local and also global human resource aspects. It has to do also with a lot of regulations, et cetera. Uh, do I create a local presence? Do I not create a local presence? Do I sell from Israel? Do I service from Israel, et cetera? And then comes the stage of research. Okay, so now everything has been theoretical. Think about it. We created a goal, which is based on our experience, but not on real information. We developed a message, which is a lot of research into who we are and what we have, et cetera. And then we started developing a strategy, and we still haven't even checked the market. So now we're doing research. The research can be theoretical and it can be practical. Practical means actually going out there and talking to customers or to partners. And we do that, uh, typically it's better to do that with people that the level of risk is a little bit lower. Because if you're gonna go to a prospective client who's, you know, you really want them to be your client and they're not in your network and you don't know them and this is the first time you've reached out to them, <laughs> you may be too early stage, you might make, um, an error that has to do with lack of experience and then burn that client. So you have to be very careful about who do you approach when you do your research. And then you go back. You go back because now you've collected information and you modify perhaps your goal, you modify your message most likely, and you certainly modify your strategy. Nine times out of ten you'll be modifying your strategy. Or you can go this way, which is another possibility. The last step is the implementation, if you remember. So everything until now was preparation, although there's a lot of work in touching on the market, but it really is preparation for actually entering the market. What I'm talking about is implementing the strategy that now you've built. Um, and of course, you have to do that in an organized and methodical way. These are aspects uh, or points that Israeli companies, especially young Israeli companies, often um, don't do very well. And the reason they don't do it very well is because they don't always appreciate the magnitude of the importance when you interact with global partners or clients. You have to always come across as a serious business, as serious business people who know how to communicate very well with people in general and with people from other cultures. You have to show that you have uh, quality uh, behind your products and quality behind your management. There are many different aspects. And talking about Germany, I think that you'll hear uh, in the, uh, the rest of the evening, you'll hear, sorry, You'll hear uh, more information about that, about how much value Germans place on uh, these issues in particular, but I'm pretty sure that you'll find that anywhere you go in the world. 
And then uh, I'll give a very, very brief example because we're running out of time. This is actually a company I worked with in the past. Of course, this is not all the work that was done over a period of four years, but it gives you some uh, ideas. It was an automated, bi it is an automated biological cell imaging system. The goal of the company was to sell it to Global Pharma, to research institutions engaged in drug research and development. Great, that's the goal of the company. Uh, defined worldwide. Uh, in the beginning, for example, it was defined as worldwide, and then it started eliminating certain regions because of the realization you can't support all the regions. Um, and then building a message. So ultimately, the message was that it's really an optimal combination of a number of aspects and not just one thing or the other, because there are systems that are faster, and there are systems that provide better quality images, and there are systems that are more robust, and there are systems that are cheaper. But you, you wouldn't find the combination of all of this. And this is based on, uh, remember we talked about the research part and the practical research about talking to prospective customers. This is built on a lot of feedback that came from perspective and real customers. And then the strategy was to expose the product through different uh, trade shows, but very well-known trade shows, um, and then establish a few uh, direct sales for footprint, uh, and then uh, go into designing and building negotiation agreements, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, distribution agreements, uh, which were, were made possible because there was already a footprint in the market, because there were already customers. And then there was some research done. The research was, ref uh, the strategy was refined, it was implemented, and then once again refined and implemented and refined. It's a process that continues. That's about it for me. Uh, so thank you very much.